Hello friends, I am back again today. And I know my YouTube videos keep coming along and I'm getting out three a week, but it's actually been probably two weeks since I have recorded anything for YouTube. And so, yay, I feel like I'm really getting something done. So I'm excited to be recording and my husband has taken kids out for ice cream. <laughs> this is our little, uh, now we live close to an ice cream stand, so when mama's got a film, they can go get an ice cream cone, go to the playground. Let's get this done. So in today's new video, we are gonna be making four homemade mixes from scratch. These are frugal homemade baking mixes that you can make ahead of time. We're gonna make baking packs. You can make these ahead of time. You can keep them in your refrigerator or you can even keep them in your pantry or in kitchen counter type containers, especially if it's baking mixes that you use often. This can save you money at the grocery store and how we see right now at some grocery stores is sometimes these mixes are not even available. Just a few months ago, pre-made cornbread mixes were not available. So I'm gonna show you today how to do four different homemade mixes to have in your frugal pantry. Number one, how to do homemade muffin packs. Now the nice thing, my directions with the muffin packs is so whenever you go to make your homemade muffins, and of course your mix is already made ahead of time, you can put in blueberries, you could put in chocolate chips, you could put in nuts, you can put in whatever you want to make your own kind of homemade muffins. We're going to also make homemade chocolate cake packs because hello chocolate cake and if we have it already in packs ready to go yay hooray for chocolate cake we're gonna be doing homemade bisquick packs and with these you can use them just like you would use easy bisquick on anything anything at all you're gonna have the packs ready to go and then we're also gonna do homemade cornbread packs today and if you're in my large family table community membership I have a sister video getting ready to come out and in that video I'm showing you how to do homemade brownie packs homemade yellow cake packs, because if we have chocolate cake, we should have vanilla cake too. And we're also gonna be doing homemade baking powder and homemade brown sugar. So all of that will be coming up over in the Large Family Table community. Also, today's video is sponsored by Reading Eggs. Whether you have kids doing public school at home options this year, whether you're a new homeschooler, whether this is your 16th, or millionth year of homeschooling as it is for me, your children can benefit from a 30-day free trial with reading eggs and math seeds. No matter what school configuration you have set up, my kids just the other night were taking turns with my phone, each having a little bit more reading eggs time. It's wonderful for a wide span of ages and stages. And as I say, reading eggs plus the math seeds gives them coverage in a lot of core subjects. So click the first link down in the description below, go to readingeggs.com forward slash LFT for your 30 day free trial of reading eggs and math seeds. Okay, to make the homemade muffin packs, we're gonna have our Ziploc bags. You could also put it in large jars. We're gonna use eight cups of all-purpose flour, one cup of sugar, a third of a cup of baking powder, one tablespoon of salt, and one cup of shortening. I'm gonna get all my stuff out. We're gonna go ahead and make that, and then I'll tell you what you do on baking day to actually use your homemade muffin mix. So I'm gonna go ahead and write homemade muffin packs on four bags. I am making sensible portions for all the sensible people out there in the universe. Each one of these packs will make about a dozen muffins. So for me, if it was a large family freezer cooking day, yeah, I would just make a big bowl and do four dozen or eight dozen at a time. But you'll be able to have four packs of homemade muffin mix ready to go. And then for this homemade muffin mix, when you want to make your muffins, all you need to do is add in one egg, one cup of milk, and then if you're gonna throw anything else in your muffins, such as frozen blueberries or chocolate chips, go ahead and throw those in. You can also add toppings to your muffins before you bake them. So this is a very versatile homemade muffin mix. I am going to now put in eight cups of flour into this bowl. Alrighty, next up we're gonna put in one cup of sugar, and now we're gonna put in a third of a cup of baking powder. Then one tablespoon of salt. Come on, salt, you can do it. 
Now I'm gonna get a wooden spoon and we'll mix this up. And then after this, we're gonna cut in a cup of shortening. I'm going to just mash up my shortening with a fork or two, make it behave. We want to keep cutting it in until our mixture resembles sand. Now we're gonna put our shortening in. And then when we have this all mixed up, we're gonna put about two and a half cups in each of our packs. Now, if you want to, you can write on each of your mixes, especially if you have kids or older kids who might be making these muffins. Teach your kids to make muffins for you or with you. You could write one egg, one cup of milk, additional mix-ins that you wanna throw in there and the baking time. What you will do is combine your egg and your milk first, mix those well, then throw in whatever your additional cup of the, the mix-ins, the frozen blueberries. Uh, if you don't want your blueberries, as I joke, to look like a bloody murder blueberry massacre, you can dust those in some flour first and then you'll have nice, perfect little round blueberries throughout your muffin. If you don't mind a purple muffin with exploded blueberries, like we don't care here, just throw your blueberries in there. You could also do your chocolate chips or nuts. And then after you get your muffins in your muffin cups, you can top with, again, the coarse sugar or the strudel topping, whatever topping you would like. Then you put your muffins in the oven at 425 for 15 to 18 minutes until they are done. Then you'll remove them from the oven. You'll let them stand for about five minutes or so to cool off and take it from there. And also, as always, all of these recipes are gonna be linked down in the description below for you as well. So I'm going to do my two and a half cups in each bag. Okay, so here is one homemade mix. A quart bag would have been just fine for this. I have an abundance of the freezer, the gallon freezer bags. Again, each pack of mix makes a dozen muffins. So for larger families, you'll want to do two to four packs. And for smaller families, one pack will give you a dozen muffins. How do you like that? These are also freezer friendly. If you want to make up your muffins and put them in the freezer for later, upcoming freezer snacks. Just follow the recipe directions, bake as you would, let them cool, and then put them in a gallon freezer bag for later. When you want to serve your muffins, all you're gonna do is set them out in the refrigerator to the frost. So you could just do that. That's what I like to do is in the evening, when I know what our plan is for the coming day, I take stock of food in the meal plan and I will check the freezer. And if I have something like freezer muffins, again, depending on what we need to do the following day, I could set out the muffins and that could be a snack for during our homeschool day or depending on the muffins, it, it could be breakfast. Pair that with some homemade smoothie or yogurt or fruit. You got a nice breakfast there. So think of this as like when you go to Walmart, go to Kroger, go to the store, and they have the little muffin pouches that you just add water or just add an egg to. This is you making your own muffin pouches at home, which again, sometimes if all you can do is buy those easy muffin pouches at the store, go for it. I've done it myself, it's all okay. But if you're able to and you want to, you can also make your homemade muffin mix in your own kitchen. Okay, so next up, we are gonna make homemade chocolate cake packs. Now, I'm gonna do these one at a time. Let's do two of them, so we'll have the packs for two chocolate cakes ready to go. Okay, to make one homemade chocolate cake pack, it's gonna be one and three quarter cups of flour. And then same amounts for the sugar. And then half a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. Ah, smells so good. Next up, we are going to do a third of a cup of instant dry milk. I just like to smell. I like to smell all the baking things, even if there's just not really much of a smell with them. It's what I'm tempted to do alone in my kitchen. Then we need a teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of baking soda, and a teaspoon of salt. That was baking powder. Next up, baking soda, and then salt. See if my salt is still being a joke. Teaspoon of compliant salt. Okay, and then next we're just gonna mix all these ingredients together. Okay, so then for this chocolate cake mix, same, same, because we're doing homemade mixes. I'm just gonna label a pack, not with the 
dry erase marker with a Sharpie. So when it comes to bake our homemade chocolate cake mix, we're gonna mix in one cup and one fourth of a cup water, half a cup of vegetable oil, three large eggs, a teaspoon of vanilla. We're gonna preheat the oven to 350 and then bake the cake for about 20 to 25 minutes. Now if you're gonna do cupcakes instead, bake those for about 15 to 18 minutes. Again, recipe will be linked down in the description below. And you can label those additional ingredients on your cake mix pack if you'd like. Let me get my handy dandy bag holders here. I had this towel to protect my computer, but it looks like it has gotten involved in the baking process, huh? So these are the little stands that I use, and these are always linked on my favorite cooking tools page but I use these when I do those slow cooker and instant pot freezer meals. And this will be a nice nine by 13 size homemade chocolate cake. So here we go, nice homemade chocolate cake mix. Head to readingeggs.com forward slash LFT to get your 30 days free of reading eggs plus math seeds. My kids love reading eggs and they love math seeds. They literally beg me to do this fun, interactive learning app. We love Reading Eggs and are super fans here at our house. Reading Eggs also offers additional supplemental phonics flashcards, educational workbooks for various grade levels, stages, and abilities, and complete reading book sets to complement your Reading Eggs journey. Again, go to readingeggs.com forward slash LFT to get your 30 days free of reading eggs and math seeds. Okay, so next up, we're gonna be making homemade Bisquick or homemade quick baking blend. I know one of the recipes I did a whole lot many years ago where I would do the fillings of a chicken pot pie and then I would take this homemade quick baking mix, mix it up, put it on top of the chicken pot pie bake, bake it up, and it was our homemade biscuit topped chicken pot pie. Worked really well for that. So if you need a quick baking mix, this is a great one to have on hand and you would use it just how you would use Bisquick or any quick baking mixes that might be your favorite. And this one is really easy. It is six cups of flour, three tablespoons of baking powder and one tablespoon of salt, and then one cup of vegetable shortening. This is best stored in your refrigerator in an airtight container for up to four months. So I'm gonna get started with the six cups of flour. Okay. We'll do our three tablespoons of our baking powder, three. Now a tablespoon of salt. I know that's really gonna be pushing it with my disobedient salt over here. Just gonna mix this for a moment, gentle. Mm -hmm. Gentle jam around. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the cup of the shortening. That will mix on in with a fork. And I'm just gonna plop that on in. You know I like my eyeball in school. It's a little harder though when you're baking. So I can give you a little farming update. We now have, I counted, we have 22 waterfowl in our garden. Mm-hmm, that is ducks. We have a variety of ducks. We have geese and we have one guinea hen. You see what happened is we ordered Pekin ducks. If, if you're new here, we started a farm, Sutton Homestead. Okay, okay, you can, you can watch that playlist. Anyway, we had ordered seven Pekin ducks and we have later raised successfully seven Pekin ducks. We also had ordered seven guinea hens, unfortunately, out of all those guinea hens, and those, I mean, they're like, they're like little cotton ball size when they come. Those, we only have one left. We lost four fairly early on, then we had three, then one day it was like, oh, I only see two. And they go out in free range, so sometimes you'll lose something. Well, we've been down to one now for probably six weeks or so but I, I think she's gonna make it. She thinks that she is a duck or a goose because she's been raised with ducks and geese, and so we have named her Duck, Duck, Goose. 
We have three geese. We believe that they are two females and one male. We use cackle hatchery for this order. And it was just a grab bag of whatever surplus geese they had. So they came and they were, I'll tell you, a wonderful, wonderful hatchery to order through. No issues whatsoever. The guinea hen losses are just losses that can happen on a farm, but the guinea hens arrived just perfectly. And then we had the Pekin ducks. Then I have a friend who's moving and she gave me a total of six ducks. I have another family member who gave me four ducks. And then the same friend, because she's moving and she's not able to take her chickens with her, she gave me about 15 or 20 more chickens. We got a lot, a big variety, beautiful variety of chickens. Anywho, we had our ducks and geese and guinea hen free ranging during the day, but we're also in the middle of building a brand new duck house and another enclosed duck yard so we can let them in and out as we choose. So for right now, since they're all getting bigger, I put them in the garden. So they're getting my garden ready for next year. It's wonderful, ducks and geese in a garden, they eat the bugs, but they let the plants be. And we have their water pools in there. They're just having a great time. They do not go outside of the fence. So it's just nice to look out my window and see all the ducks and geese playing. And the one guinea hen who thinks she's a duck or a goose. Okay, so there's our homemade this quick. This quick may not agree, so that's why I also say uh, just homemade quick baking mix. And you can find recipes online to make with this as well. So here we go, our homemade this quick pack. Now we are going to make homemade cornbread mix packs. This recipe will make five packs of cornbread mix. You can cook each pack in a smaller baking loaf pan, or you can make a dozen cornbread muffins, which my kids love, with each homemade pack. These also work well in the freezer. You can bake them, let them cool, put them in the freezer for later, stick them out to defrost from your freezer to your refrigerator whenever you have a need for cornbread on your weekly meal plan. These go great with chili, they go great with soups, fantastic. So let's get going. So first off, it's gonna be four and one fourth cups of flour. Okay, and then it's gonna be four cups of yellow or white cornmeal, whatever you have available. I have a stone ground yellow cornmeal, and also whenever we get talking about freezing different things, I will put cornmeal in my freezer as well. Four. I'm gonna use three quarters of a cup of sugar, and then a fourth of a cup of baking powder, and then two teaspoons of salt, two. Okay, I'm gonna mix this, and then it'll again be a cup of vegetable shortening. You may stick your finger in your own shortening and baking mixes if you choose. I am not uh, selling these. <laughs> okay, now I'll get out those smaller quart bags. And then to use your homemade cornbread mix packs, you just use one egg and one cup of milk. And you're gonna bake them at 425 for 15 to 20 minutes. And we're gonna put about two and a half cups of our homemade cornbread mix in each bag. And this will make a nice eight by eight size baking dish full of cornbread or as I mentioned, the corn muffins are also fun. And of course, you can stick a little chunk of a hot dog in there and make those corn dog muffins. That's a favorite recipe too. Every few months when I make those, the kids are like, oh, corn dog muffins. Thank you, mommy, thank you, thank you. It's always cute. So friends, I hope that you enjoyed making these various homemade mixes with me this evening. Again, we made homemade muffin packs. You can do whatever kind of muffins, a whole lot, a lot of muffins you would like with that. We did homemade chocolate cake packs. We did homemade bisquick or quick baking packs. And then we did homemade cornbread packs. Now, if you are over in my large family table community, you have a new video that's coming out soon with homemade brownie mix packs packs, homemade yellow cake packs, homemade baking powder, and homemade brown sugar. Be sure to click the first link in the description below to get your kids, whether they're public school, private school, homeschool, any school configuration, get them their free 
30-day trial of Reading Eggs plus Math Seeds. Wonderful program, highly recommend it. Go to readingeggs.com forward slash LFT to get your free 30 days. Also, way down below, I'll have all the recipes and directions for all these homemade bacon mixes that we made today. And I will see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye.